Hi, everybody. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? We are very, very, very happy you're here. Tuesday is my favorite night. This is my favorite hour of the week for good reason. We always have wonderful guests. Tonight is no exception. Wait till you see the two amazingly talented people we have on tonight. Leo, hit that promo, baby. So hi everybody, welcome back. Tonight is Tuesday, January 16th. Um, we had a little snow in New York today, which I'm so happy about. It's been two years. Can you imagine two years since we had snow uh, in New York? And so I'm so happy, although I had to clean my car off, but that's okay. Massachusetts got hit very hard, I think. Um, so send in a little love out to Massachusetts and my family out there. Let's check in with our guest. In first, right away, as per usual, our friend, Danielle from D's Enlightened Edits. Danielle is not just someone that I love so much as a friend, but she is a spiritual medium, a psychic, a reader, a healer. Um, she is connected to the other side. So if you are somebody like me that believes in that stuff, and boy do I, and you want to connect to someone um, that's on the other side, she is your girl. She's your girl for all of it. Mini uh, spirit animal readings, uh, just so much past life regressions. So you want to go to damsel, D-A-M-C-L designs.com and book something with D. I have so many friends that have done it that it's just mind blowing. It's mind blowing. I, I'm not, that's all I'm going to say. You know, the word life changing, I mean, the words life changing are used quite often, overused, I think. And advertising but this is life-changing because I it changed the way I looked at my own life and it changed the way I looked at the other side and it just gave me hope so I always tell Danielle D you bring hope so go and check out Danielle's site uh, Elizabeth Hopkins can't wait to see my cousin being interviewed tonight is your cousin Carolyn Montgomery or is it Jesse Luttrell now I'm dying to know um, Congrats, uh, Elizabeth Hopkins. Maria is the best. I'm sure your cousin will be great. I'm looking forward to it. Lori Towers is here. What a wonderful little family we have. Lori, you know what? I completely agree. I agree. And Richard Skipper, oh my God. Richard he says, I love Danielle. Actually, Richard, I met Danielle through you because I was doing Richard Skipper's uh, Celebrates, which is his wonderful show. And Danielle was um, actually won, because we were giving away things, Danielle won a tote bag. So that's how Danielle and I got connected, and now uh, we're great friends. So Elizabeth, these enlightened edits, she aces it. I agree, Elizabeth Hopkins, you're a smart woman. Uh, thank you, you bring hope to my friend, thank you. And Lori is amazing. Lori Towers is a press agent, uh, mass media, Lori is also a bass player, um, an incredible writer. She, and John Pietero is her husband, and they have a show. And I'm going to have Leo come on and talk about it, because Leo, um, Leo, join us and talk about WFMU, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, Leo. I'm marking my calendar. Oh, I, my I, God. Jesus, Leo. I, I'm minute. sorry. I was updating my calendar. I, I, I... For a minute, can you talk about Lori and John and what they do? Oh. You yeah, mean what I do really on good. Wednesday nights? Yeah. My Wednesday nights is when I'm listening to uh, Sheena's Jungle Room, Beneath the Underground, or Eccentric Behavior, if you're at the uh, fourth week of the month on WFMU.org. John is like this great historian. He knows all the people that play. He's also a union leader for the musicians. So he knows all these people. Local 802. And Laurie is uh, a major John harasser, which is really funny. It makes me laugh all the time. I love it. Um, I love listening to them. It's yeah, great music, too. Great music. They are music historians. They are uh, disc jockeys. They're amazing, amazing radio, radio personalities. So check them out. Um, Pretty soon, uh, Miss Laurie will be having a... I'm in a kerfuffle of creativity 
because I'm I'm helping a sister with her website. So oh, I love I'm it. Yes. By the together. way, can I, I can I just jump in for a second and say if you need help with your website, Leo is your guy. Uh, Leo uh, d- updates websites. He look at Judy updates websites. <laughs> Honey, you made me blush. You, Danny and Mr. Dominguez, my girlfriend says, how hot is my girlfriend? How hot is my girlfriend? Can we just call it what it is? I mean, and smart. Oh, my God. She's so... The other day, she was... Uh, we were FaceTiming at, at, at Brandy's after work, and I was cleaning, and Lori Muffson, Lauren Muffson was talking to her, and she goes, what are you reading, Judy? And she goes, she picks up this book. It's a book about genes, like, literally, like, <laughs> genetics. Genetics. That's what she reads for fun. She's like... Did you oh. assume? Yeah, no, a book oh. about genetics. I was like, that's what she reads for fun, so that she's super smart. Um, got you, baby. Okay, so hi, honey. Anyway, I don't even know what we're talking about because I got distracted. We were talking about uh, we were talking about Lori and John's show, which is tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. From uh, 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 from ten, 10 to, the to midnight, midnight hour your time. I listen to it at seven because I'm on the West Coast out here in Idlewild, where. We're melting snow. Oh, my God. Can we talk about our calendar? So this is what you're looking at. This is called the Nothing But the Apron 2024 calendar. It is, every, I, you know, I sell aprons as well. And over the years, people have purchased aprons, and they wear them. And lots of times they take pictures, and I they send them to me, and I put them on Instagram, right? But Michael Vaccaro, and we all just started this whole thing many years ago, bought, a, bought an apron. Um, and he took a picture of himself with nothing but the apron. Like, and you know Michael Vaccaro. He is ready to show it off. So mm-hmm. it was so cute, I put it on Instagram. And then Will T. N. Hall said, Puppy, I can do that. <laughs> That's what he said, Puppy, he said, I can do that. And I said, oh, yeah? And he took a picture of himself with nothing but the apron by his coffee machine and sent and, and I put it on Instagram. And then my friends, uh, Tom Smoker, and Andrew Hankinson, who are a married couple, said, mm-hmm. can we be in your calendar? And I was like, what calendar? They said, don't you have a nothing but the apron calendar? And oh, and so it began. And so it began. The nothing but the apron. And that was 2022. So this is 2024. So we have had, up to date now, almost 30 hotties. So uh, to, yeah. yeah, right? So this is Mr. January. He is my friend Nicholas Connell, who is, look at, oh my God, fan yourself. Woo! Woo! Nicholas is from Massachusetts, so I'm particularly fond of him. He went to uh, the conservatory, I believe, Boston Conservatory. And he is an incredible musician and musical director. He is actually the musical director and co uh, co creator of Titanic off Broadway, which. Fingers crossed. I think they're looking to move it to Broadway. It's got rave reviews. It's a it's a spinoff of a Titanic, and it's a spoof, and it's so funny. So that is um, Nicholas Connell. He is Mr. January, and he is worth the price of admission there, if you ask me. Uh, right? I yeah. I can't believe it. you said thirty people, and we have a waiting list. Right. Oh, so this is a God's honest truth. When the calendar comes out. Uh, which it just came out, and we have so many. Some of them are two people in a um, whatever, which is really cute. So I, I You're always polyamorous. Told, That's yeah, a new well, thing. Polyamorous. Listen, when I was a kid, polyamorous meant you were slut. That's all I'm going to say. We didn't call it that. Now the kids have all these labels for things. We called it. She was a little easy, slutty. He's a he's a he's a gigolo. No, oh, there we go. Him. But anyway, so uh, oh my God, Rick Sudi Caritas has joined us. Nicholas is hot. Um, Yes, causes the January thought. Now, speaking of hot, Rick uh, is also in our calendar. He is Mr. June, and I also met Rick through Richard Skipper because when I was on Richard Skipper's show, Rick was on as well. So if you want one of these, just please reach out to me, and it's only $10. I us- I will get it to you. I'm, I always bring them to the duplex on Wednesday nights and Brandy's on Fridays and Saturdays. If you swing by, you can pick it up. If you prefer I mail it to you, I can do that too. The <laughs> mailing usually comes to about four bucks. But if you want to buy more than one, it, the, the shipping will not go up because it it's just one-time shipping. It'll be $4 for shipping, even if you buy 10 of these, okay? So please let me know because they fly off the shelf. I have a few left. Please, 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 right away. I don't want to hear down the line, I wish I'd bought one. 
And they're only 10. And they're nice and thin this year. They're not bulky like last year. Okay. With that, enough said about that. Now, what time is it? We don't want to wait too long, but I do no, want to. I do want to show that picture that yes, you were please. telling me about. I want to put um, a plug in for a wonderful benefit that we are doing we um, for our friend Lori Lawrence, uh, who passed away a few years ago. I'm going to say it's maybe five or six years now uh, that she passed away quite suddenly, and we all loved her very much. And one of the reasons that we loved her is because she volunteered more than any other human being I had ever met in my life. As a matter of fact, she was a New Yorker of the week once on New York One. She volunteered for Big Brother, Big Sister, for Special Olympics, for uh, so many things. Uh, anytime that there was a crisis uh, around the world or in New York, she started something and, and donated and got other people to do it. So um, we... I have now gotten into the habit of doing this beautiful um, reoccurring benefit for Lori for a Lori, Lori, Lori Lawrence scholarship fund for Big Brother, Big Sister. And it's going to be held at the Stonewall Inn Thursday, February 8th. Uh, the show starts at 7.30 sharp, but the doors open at 6.30. So come on in. We're going to have raffles and all kinds of things, which reminds me. If you would like to donate something to the raffle, sometimes people have things that they want, you know, that they want to donate. Please let me know and we will put it up as part of what people can um, buy raffles for. I'm donating a bunch of stuff from uh, a bunch of merchandise and I think the duplex is going to uh, donate a gift certificate as they always do. And I'm sure the Stonewall Inn and Brandy's like they always do. But if you work somewhere that maybe will give us a gift certificate or you want to donate something that you have in a box that you've never used and is something that people would enjoy, please just reach out to me because I will come and get it. And uh, last year we raised uh, $3,660 in one night. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah. Erica Dubno, who is Lori's best friend, was Lori's best friend, but I believe they still are friends, even though Lori's on the other side now. Um it, she runs the ticket sales and all that, and she does a beautiful job, and it sells out. Now, it's a suggested donation of $25 to get in, but don't worry. If you're someone that doesn't have that and you want to come in that night anyway and you just have 10 that's okay, too. That's the suggested price, but we will not say no at the door. And come in and buy raffles and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. We have fun mostly because that's yes. what she like to do. And also, Leo can't be there, but we want him to be there. So we're going to perform Leo Rodriguez's beautiful song. Um, it's all about love, right, Leo? Mm -hmm. We're going to use that as a closer. So that way, Leo will be with us as well. Okay. Speaking of someone that does a million trillion things, wears so many hats, is such. A, I literally wore this shirt because I. I well, I always pick a shirt that reminds me of whatever's happening in the show. This is a good human. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing human being. She does so many things, uh, and, and I love her to pieces, and uh, I just think she's wonderful. And she's she, coming back to the stage. She's coming back to the stage, which, thank God, because the, the, the natives are restless to hear some more. Carolyn Montgomery, let's Zoom her in. I talked. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, honey. How are you? I I'm, I'm, I'm going to forget if I don't say it. I have both something to donate. Oh, really? Um, for the Laurie Lawrence, and I also have. I mean, an experience. I would. I would raffle off a class that oh, I wow. do, like a mixology class. But I also have these really cool mixers, um, like a lavender syrup and this and that. I could do a kit. Oh, you wow. know, the raffle off, like how to make your own lavender levantini with a bottle of vodka, a bottle of fresh squeezed lemon juice, a bottle of the lavender syrup. People freaking love it. And oh, my God. Yeah, yeah it'd be cool. That sounds amazing. Well, you know what I'll do? I mean, I know you have a show this week and then after I'll Thursday. Yeah, totally. no, I know. I'll yeah. come by in a few weeks. Now, I asked uh, Carolyn to come on and promote her show, but it's already sold out. <laughs> it's already sold out. But I said, you can you come on Surprise. anyway? Anyway, yeah. can you come on? Because I I, uh, I just, you do so many things and I miss you anyway. I and miss you too. And I realized when you came on tonight, first of all, this afternoon when I was listening to Big Fish and Small Pond, the tune, I missed your voice. I miss oh. hearing you sing, but also I've, I've missed your face. Oh, you yeah. too, honey. 
yeah. you too. And I, I was looking at your page tonight just to see if I missed anything. And you're working with Sherry Miracle, which is one of my great friends. She's terrific. She's she incredible, is, right? Yeah, she's amazing. And and as sweet and lovely. Oh, there she is with hair. Tonight my hair is definitely tame. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> rehear it's rehearsal here. You know, you, you got That's right. It was a long rehearsal, but Sherry's just tremendous. And, and she, I mean, this group is just, I've had a, a pretty wick, wicked head cold. So I've been marking, uh, singing very softly during the whole yeah. rehearsals, and they just are playing. They're just amazing. Yep, I know. I had that same head cold last week. It was awful, but it, yeah. luckily it went away. Yeah, I um, feel very lucky. It took just a few days. Yep. Okay, so now t let's talk about, it's a Rosemary Clooney show. It, it is. It, it's called Girl Singer with Girl Very Tiny and Singer Very Big. Yeah. And it is not just about Rosemary. It's about the the do, the parallels between the two of us and our lives. Um, oh, and, and by the way, I just want to say hello, Elizabeth Hopkins, my cousin. Thank That's you. That's your cousin. Me. Okay, I wasn't that sure. Like, yes, she's such a sweetie to be here. Oh, um, yay! But this Clooney show has been roiling around in my brain since I read her autobiography, and I just it kept. Well, I had to read it a couple of times, but the third time it resonated and I thought you're not going crazy you you and Rosemary Clooney have look we didn't have the same career <laughs> but the backstory the 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 personal stuff very similar types of women and that we both tried we we're huge people pleasers and tried to be everything to everybody wow. and when you try to be that you end up being kind of nothing for nobody and not really understanding who you are yeah. you know so so it's a it's a process of finding yourself and she did she went through a lot of really hard times um and i you know i i had some of mine uh, yeah. as we all do and you hopefully come out of it under having a real understanding of who you are so yeah that's, that's beautiful is. yeah so that's that's so the whole show is uh, wow that what a connection and I'm sure that's gonna it's gonna seep through everything that you sing, every note, that yeah. connection and that that love and that elevated space to be in. Yeah, and you know the thing is too that I've you know, I'm getting older, and one of the things that I'm aware of is that there are going to be people that would like to see a Rosemary Clooney history show, and mm -hmm. there is a lot of fun history about Rosemary in the show. And I got two people in the show that that played for her. You know, uh, Warren Vache, who played wow. for her a lot, my trumpet player. And wow. also Sherry. Sherry played with Rosemary Cloney. Sherry's so, incredible. Yes, yeah, she I is. I don't know Warren, but I'm sure he's amazing as well. But, but this is a cabaret show. It's not jazz sets. So people that want to come in and hear me imitating Rosemary Cloney and hearing jazz sets, they're not going to get that. And if they don't love it, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I'm really, I'm cool with that. Carolyn, I'm sure they're going to love it. I mean, you're amazing. I, I, I met you, year, I'm going to say 20 years ago, maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and heard you, and I felt connected to you right away. I think it was at the Jupac Flex, it, at uh, some kind of, I can't remember what it was, but I was like, I love her. And we, we have known oh, yeah. each other. Oh, my because, gosh. Here Leo's they are. Up the pictures. That's Warren Vache. Okay, um, wow. on, on your left, and that's Jonathan Cantor, who plays every wind instrument known to man effortlessly. Clarinet, saxophone, just picks them up, plays them. Brilliant. Wow, that's Brilliant amazing. player. Yeah. Oh, then Lynn Porter says it sounds like okay. a fabulous show. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, uh, we're having such a good time. That's Sherry Miracle. Uh, yes, yeah, Sherry. Oh, my God, I love Sherry. Sherry and I have been friends for almost 30 years yeah and i love diva i've always followed diva but we also wrote a song um we did a really great thing sherry called me and she said listen i she was volunteering at the ronald mcdonald house uh -huh. at the time and she said i have these two stu um not students they, they their kids one of them was very sick she said can you come in and write a song for them and what she did was she the, one of them was a bass player. It was the yeah. brother of a little boy who was um, battling cancer. And his br older brother, they were from Australia. And this older brother was a bass player. He had written a bass line. And she sent me the bass line. She said, I really want to do something with this bass line. Yeah. And so I went in and sat with them. Um, I, I sat with them and we wrote a song like that. 
uh, wow. me and Sherry and this young man. And then we recorded. I mean, I get chills thinking about it right now. I have chills. We went in there and recorded it with the kids from the, from the Ronald McDonald's house and their beautiful little voices. The parents. We even had a, a police officer that was with us from there that went into the studio with us. And it's called. It's on. Um, it's on uh, Apple iTunes and all the, all that stuff. It's called yeah. "I Will Always Be There." If you just type in Ronald McDonald House, yeah. the song will come up. And oh, I will totally do that. That yeah. is really something. And, and Sherry, you that's Sherry. Experiences. I yeah. mean, people always people are always saying to me, "You volunteer so much. You do so much." I'm like, you know, this is the good stuff. You don't forget that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I love that. I've sold out Birdland. That's great. Oh, but I, you know what I'm doing the next day at yeah. nine o'clock in the morning? I'm going with Frenchie. With I Eric love my Garcia. Frenchie, <laughs> Eric Eves Garcia. I named him that. Eric Eve Garcia and Ann Tallman. Oh. And actually, my partner is in from Paris, and he's going to come and he's going to play. Um, oh my god! For the Viscardi, the Henry Viscardi School for kids in Long Island. Many of them. Um, are not ambulatory. Many of them cannot speak. Oh and we're doing God. an entire music program for them. We're there and and we're doing a wonderful concert with them in May. Wow. And, you know, all of us leave after our day with them and say, this is the best thing I've done all week. I and know. I guarantee you, I will have played Birdland the night before. Sorry, I'm I've got a toy for my dog. That oh, my, I know. My, my dog's sleeping right now. But yeah, that's why yeah. I have treats. I have treats right here. You're right. She, she gets restless. George has a tendency to all of a sudden realize that I'm not paying full attention to him. So right. To, yeah. Right. And then, and that's, there's something about Zoom. All of a sudden, animals are like, what's going on? Totally. Uh, oh, there we go. Now, that that is a group of kids from um, East Harlem. And they did a Johnny Mercer program oh with me. And there's God. Eric. You can see Eric in the corner. Yep. Oh, Eric right. Garcia, our Frenchie. We call him Frenchie. Yeah, he's the best, which is so funny because. He and Bill, my partner, um, who is Bill's American, but he's been living in Paris for 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, and the two of them, the, the first time they spoke to each other, it was in French because they both assumed the other one was French. Oh, my goodness. It really? It was really sweet. And they just started going off in French. And then all of a sudden, I, I sort of turned and looked because I'm used to Bill speaking in French. And, and that's fine. But but I looked at him and he said, does he speak English? And Eric said, oh, oh yeah, I know I speak English. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so yeah, great. It was, really, it was wonderful. Wow. Well, I, I the first time I met was what was it? Yeah, the first time I met Eric, I was working at Bar Centrale above Joe Allen, and Eric used to come in because he was working at uh, Jay Josephine. Yeah, and he would do these impressions of his boss at the time. Oh God, it was, it was all with a French accent, mm -hmm. and I was trying to get a hold of my bartender because I was a waitress there, and Eric was kind of monopolizing him because he was so funny. Doing yeah. these impressions. So I finally lost my temper and I said, Frenchie, put a lid on it. I need the bartender. And just, I made it up. Like, and that was, was it. And that, it stuck and he came yeah. over. But this is so typical of him. He came yeah. over, he apologized for, and said, I'm so sorry. I and after, I, after that, I was like, I love this guy. And we became almost best friends. That is so funny. Yeah. Well, he is, he is a wonderful, wonderful man. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. Well, he yeah. speaks very highly of you as well. Yeah. So now, uh, Connor Weiss has also checked in. We both Hi, love Connor. Connor. I know. How much do we love Connor? So much. Uh, so much. And uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy my, son, my son just waved and went, Hi, Connor. Oh, how cute. <laughs> yeah. And now your son is, um, he's super busy too. He's, he, is, he is a busy guy. Yeah. He, he I follow him. Yeah both of you and you you're always so busy even during covid you were so busy now you're still teaching the classes right i i do i i uh, i teach them in person now and i teach some online as well if they book you know people book me and want to do that and um you know i teach uh, culinary classes and these mixology classes and it's an extra source of income that i at this point in time still want and want yeah. to make so i just do it yeah that's great yeah, yeah. and i remember you were doing a lot of that during covid yeah, that's that, that got me through COVID. I mean, being with the the ASA, the American Songbook Association, was still busy. We were doing. I started a, a an interview show called Sunday Sessions, 
and we we interviewed. I mean, it was incredible. Charles Bush, Lucy Arnaz. Right. Would you like to say hello? Is that what's going on? You yeah, that's what I know. That's what Rizzo's going to yeah. do that any second. So yeah. Just pop up. Um, you know, it, and and it was it was a this group of, of stars, and they all had time on their hands. So I got them, Marilyn May, Melissa Erico. I mean, it, it was endless. Wow. Now speaking of stars, Sally Mays is directing your show, right? She is, and she is a star. She is a yeah. star. Yeah, she's also a really good director, and uh, she has worked hard with me, um, and and been relentless in a way that it, that. You know, it's something that it, it's weird once you've sort of crossed over to not dimming your light anymore, which oh, is something I that, that I did for a long time. I love that. And, and also hi hiding a little bit behind a persona that I thought, I look at videos of myself, I don't hate them. I wasn't terrible. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that I was being something. Mm. Um, and whatever it was I was being on stage, it wasn't quite me. And um, and I I could see it. And I think a lot of, and I, and I've, and in the last five or six years, I've kind of taken a look at it and thought, okay, let's get rid of another layer of whatever right. it is you're hiding behind. And it's not even deep dark secrets. I think we just all are pretty sure we're not enough. Yeah, especially as women. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And you know what I think? I think. I mean, for me, I, I don't know if you have had a similar experience, but the older I get the more I, I, I like myself, even though there are things about myself that, man, yeah. you know, I wish were the same as 20 years ago, but I, I, I don't know. I like myself better because I, I, I've learned more. I trust myself. Yeah. And like you were talking about, you know, it's sometimes it's not that we don't love other people, but you have to start taking care of ourselves. And I love that. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I, think, um, I think the things that we think we are, um, and, and so, for instance, I, I, would, I would get on stage and sort of pull this, I'm brilliantly educated, and I have this fabulous mid-Atlantic accent. And, and the, what I do when I put that on is, is make sure you know how different I am than you are. Now, I didn't do it that much. I wasn't an asshole. But, you know, I, I just, uh, and, and I, think, I think I got really aware of it. And Sally would, would say, do it again. You're doing it again. You're, you don't have to say that. You don't have to say it. No, cut it. Who cares? I love it. Oh, you know, and it. she finished what Jay Rogers started. So right, right. Yeah. Jay Rogers, what a doll. Yeah, what a great energy. I um, he's with me every day. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So John Savino, who happens to be my cousin, uh, says, as a man, I sometimes feel the same. I too uh, myself. Um, I'm more, so you're more mature. Yeah, you just kind of, you yeah. know, it's, I think we all do. If we're continuously working on ourselves, which I think most of us are, we do want to evolve. But there's a freedom in getting older. There's such Absolutely. a freedom in it. Absolutely. And, and a value. And I, and I personally don't have a whole lot of time for the culture that doesn't value it. Yes, and I, I want I agree. to put more time into the culture that does because there is a lot to value. And I remember not listening to women in their 80s. I of listen course. to women in their 80s now. Yeah, I, I listen and pay attention. I wish I had. I wish right. I listened more to my mother. Oh, um, but, right. And, you know, uh, and, and she was so wise. And I'm sure she saw me and thought, oh, boy. You know what? It's funny <laughs> that you say that. You know, when I had my session with Danielle, who's amazing, Danielle or, or me. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Um, my mom, of course, you know, came through and, and Danielle said, do you have any questions for your mom? And I said, I don't have any questions because I, 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 I just don't. But I can you just give her a message? Tell her she was right about everything. Yeah. And, you know, that's what it is. It's like as younger. I mean, I can speak for myself as a younger person. I was really wild mm -hmm. and Me I didn't want to hear anything. No, yeah, I was. Want to hear anything? You, I don't know if you seem like a a, a much more stable. Oh, than one. I was. No, well, my <laughs> son just laughed. Uh, no, <laughs> but, but but no, people that knew me, but I was a I was an absolute party animal and yeah. reckless as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mom was just right about everything. And so, uh, it, you know, in hindsight, I just wanted her to know that that's all it was. It was funny that I got I felt like I got a chance to tell her. You know. Yeah, um, but now you are doing something else in May. 
you have another show coming up in May? Yeah, I'm hoping to be re. I'm hoping, you know, I know that I'll be returning to. I don't know for certain that I'll be returning to Birdland because I don't have dates. But um, I sold it out like this, and I'm hoping I, I will be doing more shows sort of across the country of the wow. Rosemary show, representing both the ASA and myself. And then I'll I'll come back to New York in the spring. Oh my God, that's so great! Yeah, it'll be well, fun. You, um. You are always, please always let us know, Carolyn, you know, what, even, even if you're traveling, we'll, we'll just plug your shows and stuff like that. Um, I will let you know. And it's been such a thrill to see you and to hang oh, out. You too, honey. I love you to pieces. Love you too. Give your son a, a big hello from us. And I, I will. will. I know you've got big days coming up, so I'm not going to keep you too long. But um, Birdland is this Thursday, although it's sold out. But nonetheless, yeah. we want to just, we're celebrating with you. It's this Thursday at Birdland, 8.30. Yep. So yeah. we'll be thinking of you, Honey Bunny, and um, just crush it. I know you're going to crush it. Thank you. See you soon. Okay, love. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Carolyn Montgomery, everybody. Woohoo! Yay. Thank you. Uh, she is lovely. She is talented, smart as smart can be, and really, like, such a... A giving human being so uh, this show is this particular show is sold out but she has me- she will have many shows across the country so write down that name Carolyn Montgomery and if she comes to your town we'll remind you so um, anyway Leo what were you gonna say I saw you smirking uh, a little she's, bit she's formidable she is one of those formidable women that I I have the pleasure of, of meeting and knowing and, and and you've worked with Carolyn right yeah, for uh, the ASA videos and, and also for her, her website. But she is, now, I imagine we're going to be getting a calendar up there with all these dates she's going to be having. Oh, yeah. I'm now, sure it's going to be pretty popular. And she didn't talk about it as much as I wanted to talk about it because I got off on other things. Uh, but she is the executive director of the American Songbook Association, which mm-hmm. is a no small potatoes. No, no. I mean, she I mean, downplays, she's so humble. But she, they just did a wonderful, uh, uh, extravagant uh, 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 award ceremony and, and tribute with Betty Buckley, which Mario was a part of, I believe. Yes, he my friend Mario well. Canto. Two Who, and a half the way, hours show. We're going to have Mario on the show. I'm just He's so busy right now, but he um, loves coming on the show, and we love him to pieces. So, But I think I want to have him in person. Now, i got to give everybody a disclaimer before we bring on our next guest. So I don't know if I told you 8,000 times or 10,000 times, but my apartment is going to be, I have to get everything out of my apartment by January 29th because they have to redo the ceilings because there's ceilings issues. So um, I'm going to be broadcasting, I think, for the first two weeks in February from uh, Senator Mesa's house, of course. (laughs) And I think Leo Rodriguez is going to be our chef. He's going to be doing cooking the meals. I'm going to have some... Go ahead, so, keep eating. That's right. So it's going to be a little crazy. I'm a little crazy on this end. Wait, 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 wait. Andale, that? come mas. What's that? Andale, come mas. Hurry up. Keep eating. Oh, okay. Oh, I love keep that. Going. Yes. Do it in Spanish. I love that. Now, let's check on our friends before we bring on our very handsome next guest. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Of course, we have Danielle. We have oh, John Pietera. What, honey? The weather girl Lord. signed in. Oh, my God. My cousin, Rina Crignali Bergi who Leo affectionately calls, say it. Weather girl. And when he does it, he shimmies a little bit. Weather girl. You all, it makes me laugh and you go, weather girl. Even when I hear you say it, like when I listen to the podcast, I I start shimmying. (laughs) Yeah. So Rena uh, posted a bunch of great pictures of her beautiful backyard in the snow. Lynn Portis, genius, has joined us. Genius sighting. May I just say that Lynn Portis, genius, is on a tear. She's on fire. She's written a bunch of new songs uh, with a lot of people, but the last three with Chauncey Dandridge, our friend, they are so amazing. Their dance, it's it's dance. It's, it's awesome. And it's, it's coming through the label of Portis Music. Yes. And I, I said to her today, because I was talking, we talk almost every, you know, every couple of days. I was doing laundry. I said, Lynn, uh, there's a song called All we, uh, Reveal. It's called Reveal. It's been stuck in my head for three days. I, I go to sleep, and it's the last thing I hear. I wake up, and it's the first thing that... Da, 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 da. It's in my head. So, Waking up to uh, a beat. 
There is a release coming up. Keep your eyes open. You can download it. You can buy a download. Uh, you should. You, it's going to be in your head. It's great for the gym. It's great for uh, you're around your house. You can get to start cleaning, doing something. You want to get your mind going and your body going. This mm -hmm. is the song. It's called Reveal. But there's a couple of them coming up. But Reveal's coming up first. Billy Angel says, hi. Hi, Billy. Long time no see, babe. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you for joining us. Please, I hope you stay on for a minute because we have another wonderful guest. Kachi, what's up, baby? Oh, my God. Kachi was is my friend. She uh, and I played softball on different teams. But we, oh. we yeah, we're, I mean, we played in the same league, but we always played against each other. And we couldn't stop laughing, of course. So. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, Susie Campanero was on that team as well. And, um, okay, John has joined us, John Savino. Let me see. So I think we're good. All right. Uh, oh, John Pitera says dance floors are freaking on fire. They are. Chauncey was playing it last night at Stonewall. It's an amazing song. Uh, okay, but there's a couple of songs coming out. So there's a whole series by Lynn Portis and Chauncey Dandridge. Keep an eye out for that. And an ear, an eye and an ear. Now. Check, check this out, Maria. What check this be? out. Bam. Oh my God, that is, is that? one handsome devil who has been this year and last year, whatever, has been in show after show after show. It's impossible to keep up with him. But um, can we please zoom him in? The very handsome and incredibly talented. He just had to show himself at the triad. Jesse Luttrell. Can we bring him in, Leo? Yes, he there is. he is. Right oh my God. Look at that handsome devil. Okay. How, you and you got that great hair. We love that great hair. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm getting. I just got over that head cold that everybody had. Too. Everybody had it. Everybody had it. And, up a bit, but. <laughs> did you ever do Bye Bye Birdie with that great hair? I, I haven't. Um, I would. That's a great role for you too, Jesse. Fun. Um, so no, this year you did Sweeney Todd. Yeah, Sweeney, yeah. You did Gaston again in Beauty and the Beast, right? Mm -hmm. Which I love, and then um, you were in Oliver, right? Um, Oliver was last summer when we last left. summer, yeah. A and a lot of that happened. We have a lot of Massachusetts listeners and viewers, so talk about those theaters that you usually perform at. They're in, in Massachusetts. Yeah. So uh, uh, last, not, not this past summer, but the summer before, like the summer after lockdown, I worked for the first time in New Bedford Festival Theater, which is in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, and I did I did guest on there in Beauty and the Beast. And then right after that, I worked for the Winnipesaukee Playhouse uh, in Meredith, New Hampshire, which is not so far from there. Um, yeah, beautiful. I, I've been there. I know it well. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And uh, that's where I did Oliver. And, uh, you know, they called me a couple of months later and asked me to come back because they had roles <laughs> for me. Um, uh, I, I went back to New Bedford and I did Joseph this past summer. And I oh, played. that was it. Was that that? Was that Joseph right there? Yeah, the Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it. And it was my second time doing that, but the first time I played the Pharaoh, I was like, I don't know, like twenty five, and I didn't really know what I was doing yet. So this, it was fun to do it now that I'm twenty seven. Um, hey, yeah, <laughs> really fun show. Um, and then right after that, I left and I did at the same theater where I did Oliver. I, I played Sweeney and Sweeney Todd, which was one of my favorite shows. It was great. It was, it was really difficult to learn it in two weeks and, and get it up. But me and, and the girl, uh, Molly, who played uh, Mrs. Lovett, uh, were kind of like, there she is. Uh, we're uh, war buddies and we got through it. We held each other up and, uh, you know, it worked out. We did a really great show. Oh, my goodness. Now, I called you. I mean, I could call you every month and have you come on because you're always doing something, right? And I, my, my whole thing is I love to promote my friends because that's that, that's the hardest part about this our careers, right? It's right. I think. It's like, you know, who wants to promote themselves? It's kind of like, I don't know, it always feels awkward, right? So It was, it was fun in my 20s, but now I hate doing it. Right. And I think... So I always am like, oh, you know, who's doing what? So I can be that vehicle, you know, and um, so I can call you every month. That's for sure. I appreciate you because it's getting harder because everyone's looking for attention on the Internet. It's like I know void sometimes. So people like you um, who, who lift our community up or we need more of that. And yeah, 
you, really. you, you know what it is, honey? I, I, I mean, this show is about uh, creative people and, and what that really means, the reality of that. I always say that. It's the reality of being creative and, and how that manifests. And so that's really what it is. Like, I, I, I see how hard people work. And like, who wants to always be promoting themselves? So, as I said, I could have you on every month because you're always doing something. But I just saw you post something really cool this week that I think starts tomorrow, right? Yeah. Is it tomorrow? So tell us what you're doing this really cool thing. So I've been, well, you know, when I go out of town and do shows, um, I, I figured out like a couple of years ago, as artists, we all need uh, a purpose more more than. Um, learning how to play roles or, or, or getting attention or fame or money. God knows we don't get money. But right. uh, I figured out, like, my purpose was to inspire people and offer escape. And mm. I think that part of that I decided I wanted to teach um, as well. So when I go out of town and I do shows, I offer to teach master classes if there's, like, a local uh, theater, theater school or um, if I'm at a university, in a university city, I, I'll teach my workshop there. Wow. So, but I, I'd like to see the thing is, like, you know, like you said, I'm out doing all these shows, but I, I don't, I haven't been in New York as much as I want to, so I want to build more on the community, uh, on my community here, <coughs> all over the line, so if you, you don't have to be in New York to take a class, but... Um, I'm offering this free actor's bar. And what, what that means is it's not like a ballet bar where we're gonna do like a workout, a physical workout. It's um, a psychophysical bar, which is, you know, in ballet class, I used to be a ballet dancer years ago. In ballet class, we take bar um, to start our day as a ballet dancer. And, you know, no matter how you feel going in in the morning and taking your bar, um, by the end of bar, you're, you're ready to do what you need to do for the day and I feel like as actors we don't all really have that go-to um, thing to keep our bodies and our minds um, in tune with each other so I've studied a lot of um, uh, somatic techniques which are physical techniques uh, in like clowning and mime um, <clears throat> but but a lot of my stuff uh, is Michael Chekhov inspired and uh, there are you know, each class we do is gonna it's gonna be a different progression, but it's all stuff that anyone can do on their own. Wow. Meaning, you know, like usually we, here's the thing. I've taken so many classes and it costs a lot of money to take class, especially in the city. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of schools you have to commit to, you know, like six weeks or six months to a program. And if you're a working actor or, or even if you're, you know, if you're an actor in New York and you have another job, mm -hmm. it's really commit um, right. that financially and, and time wise. So this is a class that one class you take one and it'll benefit you. You take wow. a series of them and it'll benefit you. It's something you can do that builds on what you already work with, what you already what you already know as far as acting technique. So And is it is it a reoccurring night that you do it? Or so explain how that works. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the first one we're doing tomorrow night. It's free because what I'm doing is trying to create the community first and then eventually um, in a month or two or whenever we build that community I, I'll do it a, a pay as you can kind of thing. Um, but I want to introduce people to the work. Right. And so he's flashing on the screen the uh, <laughs> form. If you go to my Facebook, uh, you can, it's pinned on the Facebook, fill out this form if you'd like to join tomorrow. You, you can do it in your living room. It, you don't need any special equipment or anything. Um, and I would like to start it uh, weekly, um, probably the same Wednesday nights for now, um, and see how much of an interest we get and see what we can build together. Okay, um, I love that. So, do people have to? How do they sign up for it? How do they? How yeah, do they just, I just the link is uh, it's a long link. So just find Jesse Luttrell on Facebook. Um, it'll so, be up post on my page because I pinned it. So okay, uh, and um, I'm going to spell it for our, our podcast listeners. It's uh, J E S S E L is in Larry U T T R E L L dot com. So you can go to jessielutrell.com and there's a backslash act, acting bar and bar is B A R R E. Yeah. If you, yeah. And um, 
the thing is, like, if you can't join this week, you know, fill the form out anyway. You'll get a, you'll get the link tomorrow. If you can't join, you can't join, but you'll be on the list so that the next week you'll get the email too. Um, it's something that anyone of any level can do, whether you have physical restrictions or handicaps. There are modifications to everything we do. Um, it's something if you're an actor who's very experienced or an actor with almost no experience or wow. a creative artist, a musician, a painter. I remember I used to say to Michael Chekhov um, acting studio, we had a couple painters in our class. Really? Uh, because th what this work does it, is it opens up your creativity. It opens up um, your body and your mind to experience images and sensations that come from images without... Um, without having to like see we're, we're bombarded by images all day online right and it's none of it's really real because it's not coming from our imagination so our imagination right, right. is dulled a lot especially modern actors um, so this work uh, wakes that up and the I more love you love that awake you, you become I love so. that so go and check that out at jessielutrell.com and uh, sign up. And as he said, you you know you don't have to go there every if you if you can't go every week, but just check in. And tomorrow night is free. What time does the class start tomorrow? Uh, I think we're at eight tomorrow. Yes. Okay. All right. Eight, eight o'clock. Um, and it's it'll probably be about two hours long. Uh, you don't have to stay for the whole thing. You know, whatever. Yeah. Just check in. Check yeah. in. Do something nice for yourself. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Yeah great at the end too when you do this work because you just feel um opened up you just feel like you're happy or you're at peace with you're too centered like it, it just feels really good to do yeah when you're like in that flow state when you're like writing a song or like painting something and like you're in that state that's what this work does it gets you in that state oh so. i love that that sounds beautiful um all right go and check that out we are going to take uh, a, a few minutes to do the food section of our show, which, Leo, can you join us, please? We The food section of our show is called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. So here comes Leo. So on the count of three, one, two, three, Go Ahead, Go ahead. Keep, keep Eating. eating. <laughs> okay, so what did I make tonight? I always, I cannot ask my guests to come on and be creative if I am not creative every week myself. So I challenge myself. Now, this week, I'm literally trying to find places for everything in my apartment. It's insanity. But, so I did what my mother always did. And, Jesse, I think you'll identify with this because you're Italian, too. My mother was the original chopped. She, we didn't, she didn't go out and buy for the day. She would look in her freezer or her refrigerator the cupboard and say, what do I have? So that's what I had to do today. And I had sausage, spicy Italian sausage in the freezer. So I made, um, I chopped it up, spicy Italian sausage with Vidalia onions. Then I, I said, damn, I wish I bought a red pepper, but I had roasted red peppers in the refrigerator. Oh. So I put roasted red peppers and uh, little baby peas, which I had in the freezer. And then I have this beautiful spice. I got to share this. I love spices that, that are a bunch of great things. This is a great company that I love. Um, and it's called Elements. I have to plug them because they're such a good company. Elements of Spice. They have a bunch of different things. But this particular one I love, it's called Earth's Energy. And this is what's in it. It usually has like 10 ingredients. So this particular one has sea salt, roasted sesame seeds, black peppercorns, fennel seeds, which Italians mm. love, coriander seeds, which I believe is dried cilantro, and then, uh, let me see, ginger, garlic, anise, um, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of clo a clove. So this is all in this, and it smells so good. I can't, it's kind of got a, almost like a, 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 just a weird Christmas flavor to it. It's strange. Maria, but, it's perfect for you. It's got that many ingredients, and your dishes have that many I, ingredients. That's what I like. I like a lot, like a, I call it kitchen sink um, cooking. It's like, just throw as much as you can in there. Um, and then create something like amazing. Okay, so that was my what I'm having. Also, I'm on the keto, so I'm trying to s stay away from um, bread and things like that. And rice. Yes, Rita says, go ahead, keep eating, you know. Say, okay, John, uh, John Pietera says, I want that. John, when you guys finally come over, when my apartment is done, I want to have you over and Lori and, of course, Louise Sorrell, our friend, and Lynn Portis and Joe. 
Um, so I will make that. That would be one of the things I make. Okay. My salad, you know, I love my salads. Italian kids love salad. Don't ask me why. We just, like, fight over the salad. <laughs> so um, red leaf lettuce, Bermuda onion, uh, Marzano tomatoes, baby Marzano, mm-hmm. San Marzano tomatoes, which are very sweet and delicious, Persian cucumbers, and Sicilian olives, which are oil-cured olives. This does not need any salt at all because the, the olives are very salty. So what I put on... I uh, put this is great balsamic vinegar that I love. It's called Fini, F-I-N-I, um, and it's uh, imported from Italy. It's divine, and they only sell it. I've only found it at Whole Foods. A little pricey, but it's worth it's worth it. And then Tuscan olive oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and that is from the New England Olive Oil Company. My sister buys them for me. Um, it's a very Mediterranean salad. Yes, thank you, Leo. It is a very Mediterranean salad. Mm-hmm. I was kind of feeling that. I'm feeling we, a little opa. Here. There you go. And again, I love desserts, but because I am on the keto, I have to watch it. But what did I get? This is like such a good go-to. Um, sugar-free Jello, um, a strawberry Jello, with mm-hmm. a little bit of whipped cream. This is so super low carb, and it's really good, and it does the trick. And the when you do I, your keto whipped cream, do you put in a little vanilla to supplement, like for the sugar? I do at not, all? but should I? I, I? A lot of people do that, and they say that it, it makes it sweeter. Uh, you, you know, you get the aroma and such of the oh, vanilla, so you don't you don't add sugar in it. See, I'm not a dessert maker, so that I don't even think that way. I'm a, I'm a chef, but I don't make dessert, so that makes sense. Okay, I'll try that. Vincent Puglisi has joined us. He says, miss your cooking, Maria. I miss you, Vinny. When you come back to town, let me know, and I'll cook you some stuff. Although, I, I have one more week to crank out food, and then I have to stop. Gotta, <laughs> my apartment, I have to get rid of all that. I'm not get rid of I have to move it into storage and so they can come in, fix everything. But but it's going to be nice. It's going to be painted. It's going to be beautiful. Okay. Uh, Leo, you're corrupting her. You are right, John. Rena... Leo, I was just writing the same thing you just said. Oh, my God. Yeah, because Rena is a dessert maker, so she understands. Uh, <laughs> Jesse, what, what was something you, what was some favorite foods that you liked growing up? Uh, growing up, my, my grandmother made the gnocchi every Sunday. You know, the I great love that. Yeah, grandmother was Italian, right? Oh, well, we're very, very, very Italian. <laughs> so, uh, I love that. She didn't know what she was cooking either. Um, but so gnocchi, you you pasta? Every we had pasta. Every, well, every Sunday, of course. But my mother made pasta every day. Um, like yeah. looking back now, I realize it's just really cost effective. Yeah, right? it's, you know, I eat the pasta now because it's so cheap. Um, my grandfather, I remember when 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 they were all still alive, we would have Thanksgiving, and my grandmother would make a turkey and like a ham, and you know, it'd be like five different meals and on the, on the table. And he'd be like, "What? You making no macaroni?" Of course. <laughs> well, we had it's, it's a dude. So what we had for Thanksgiving was it would start with an antipasto. If it was Ziana's house, it would be she would make the Italian wedding soup, and then antipasto, and then there'd be a lasagna. That, yeah, was, that was the was big good. thing. That's what we wanted to think. And then it would be the turkey. There'd be a ham. Sometimes a roast beef with all the sides. It was ridiculous. I mean, that's that's what regular Italian, if you go to Italy, you know, pasta isn't the main dish, it's the first dish. Yeah, la prima, right. Yeah, prima. Uh, Prima piatto, yeah, so it's true. It's like kind of like almost, not quite an appetizer, but because they had appetizers too, of course. But um, Andy Prasky says, hello, Jesse, wonderful talent. I haven't seen Andy in forever. How are you? I know. (laughs) Andy's the best. And I... Saw Andy a few months ago at uh, Tony DiNapoli's. He was going to see Back to the Future with uh, Sean. And he said, you want to meet us at Tony DiNapoli's? And I went, and we had so much fun. And then Michael Bow just mysteriously appeared with Ben. It was like... It was mysterious. I mean, he just was like, what are you doing here? It was like, what are you doing here? (laughs) Yes, that's very good. That's very good. And we just like hung out, the five of us. It was really fun. Um, so Elizabeth Hopkins says I would make that salad minus the olives because I don't have the acquired taste for them. I understand. I get. Uh, I gave up sugar, processed foods, junk foods, fried foods, 
meat and lost 26 pounds. I used stevia. Beautiful. That's, well, amazing. Because I, it's very important, I, I find, as I, for me as I get older, because I eat a lot of junk. When I'm on a tear, I eat junk, 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 like chips and potato, I mean, ice cream. I love sugar and salt, right? But if I really want to get on the bean, I try to eat like very low, very, very, very low sugar and low carbs. And we have a benefit coming up. I want to like squeeze into my pants. So that's the deal. Now, Jesse, what do you got? Uh, you got the class. Do you have any shows on the horizon? Um, I'm leaving in mm, three or four weeks. I got to look at the calendar to do Little Shop. Um, I'm playing the dentist. Or oh, I'm my God. Nice. And it's a quick three-weeker, so I'll be back um, right after my birthday. I'll be back uh, the first week of March. Oh, and my then, God. Jesse, where's that? Which theater? Um, this is at the Sky Pack in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where I did Beauty and the Beast previously. So if anyone thinks I'm an asshole and that I have, like, that I'm difficult to work with, just look at my resume and you'll see that every. Every theater has called me back to nobody come back. Thinks, honey, nobody thinks you're an asshole. Why would you even say that? Nobody. I'm no, kidding. You're I'm wonderful. Kidding. Are you kidding me? It's really yeah. great to like back to the same theaters because it's fun to see those see the people again. Who and also the fact that they keep asking you back means that you're doing an amazing job. Oh, thank you. So you I, I, think I show up. You know, I, no, I work. But, and, and that there's a lot to be said for that, with being reliable and talented, because it doesn't always go hand in hand. <laughs> Jared Miharis has joined us. Hi, Jared. Jared's going to be in the Lori Lawrence benefit. I invited him, and he was so gracious, and he said yes right away. So, uh, Vincenzo D'Amato, hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You know who that is? Vincenzo is Rina's compare. So, oh. you know, they're all abrutes, and that's compare and comares, and so uh, that's on Rina's dad's side. So um, uh, Vincenzo D'Amato is uh, a Bruzzese and a wonderful guy. Jared is going to be there, yes. So we're excited about it. And um, so what do you want to do after the show? You want to go straight to Jesse Luttrell's website. Check out his free, tomorrow night he has a free class, an actor's bar, B-A-R-R-E class that you can check out and uh, hopefully you know down the line sign up for and then you know it's a suggested kind of thing but i suspect leo you're an actor doesn't mm -hmm. that sound amazing i love working check off stuff that's always good to work uh, um and, you got to keep your muscles working yeah yep. and it sounds just wonderful so so many of our friends out and you don't have to as jesse said you don't have to be a professional actor at all, we have a lot of our friends that, I, uh, that are out there in the country, across the country, that work in theaters, that work with uh, beautiful community theaters that I'm sure could really love this. Oh, your friend Amelia has joined, Amelia Morris. Intimacy uh, coordinator for Dr the Dracula I just did. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and she says Jesse is freaking amazing. We agree, we all love Jesse. This is the We Love Jesse Club. Um, <laughs> So, Jesse, please always feel free to send me what you're doing uh, or post it on my wall, honey, my, my Maria Gentili wall, and I'll post it on my What's the Story with Maria wall. And, you know, anything you're doing, any show you're in, we always want to promote your stuff. And also because so many of our friends are in Massachusetts when you right. do, do those Massachusetts shows. Yeah. Um, you know? so the fun, New Bedford is, uh, they're not doing a season this summer because the famous theater that they do their shows in, the Cytarian, uh, which is one of the oldest theaters in the country, is they're doing a massive renovation. So okay. next time we're back at that theater in Massachusetts, it'll be a big deal, big new theater. But um, Winnipesaukee is in New Hampshire. It's just over the border. Yeah. So that's, to, uh, like, to uh, Massachusetts people, that's not a far ride. Hours max. We had some New Bedford. The, the guys who founded New Bedford came and saw me in Sweeney Todd. They drove up for the day. It's a nice yeah. day. It's a be yeah. and it's beautiful up there. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. It's so, yeah. all right. So, honey, I always ask people to leave uh, our creatives that listen to the show and just you know, pe ever look. I feel like everybody's creative in some way. Everybody, whatever it is you do, whether you're someone that 
say, I'm not creative, but you knit beautifully, you cook, you create things for your home, you teach. All of us are creative out there, or you wouldn't be listening to the show. So, Jesse, what is something that you want to leave our listeners and viewers with? Something inspiring as a creative person? Um, I think it's that we we need people like us more than ever right now because uh, I think as Patty LePone said, you know, people have been dumbed down so much, and there's so much corporate entertainment out there and rehashes of old things. The more we keep just doing what we're doing, the more we're going to inspire another generation of people to do the same. If oh, we I give love up, that. It's going to be McDonald's entertainment, you know, so we got to keep pushing. Yes, you're absolutely right. Leo, what do you want to leave people with? I, you always jump in and say something. Uh, everyone be patient with each other. It's easy to be frustrated nowadays with people and their views. Just take a minute, yeah. breathe it out. Remember, no matter what people say, we're still stuck on the earth together, people. Right, right. And you know what I love? Uh, my favorite thing to do is just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with strangers. I will talk to a tree. I mean, that's what my girlfriend says. Oh, my God, you'll talk to a log. I, I love talking to people. And, you know, to me, that's exchanging energy with another human being. That's a beautiful connection. And the ripple effect, especially talking about theater, music, things that you love. And notice things that other people do that, are, that they work hard on. Notice it and compliment it. I think that's really important. Uh, Andy says, your friendship during Joseph was beautiful. Uh, Bennett. Ingrid Bennett. So, anyway, uh, and thank you. Andy is a, our friend. He's a filmmaker, super creative. Trees are good talkers, too. Thank you, Danielle. Danielle, see? I mean, so we are very grateful you all came on and spent this hour with us. We want to remind you, Carolyn Montgomery was our first guest. She is a lovely. Please follow her. Go and follow her on Instagram, on uh, Facebook. Carolyn Montgomery .net. Leo, did you do her website as well? You did, didn't you? Leo does beautiful websites. If you yes, need your, your website created, revamped, kept up, Leo's your guy. He does mine, and it's I, I can't say enough. He did Lynn Portis's. So go and check out our friends. This is Jesse Luttrell, uh, and follow him. He does beautiful things. We just want to say we love and appreciate you. Please come back every week. We will always try to open our hearts and bring you what we have. If you have musical favorites, go to Jesse's page, go to the video pages, and listen to him on his YouTube stuff. Yes, Thanks. he's so good. He's so good. Thank you, everybody. And go and check out lynnportis.com. She has three new songs coming out that are being released, and it's amazing. She's some kind of, what is that word? Genius. Genius. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.